Son and to the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the living light who transformed darkness into light. Through the blessings of this glorious Sunday, make us worthy to praise you with all those who saw the radiant light of your resurrection. We worship and thank you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the living one who by his death gave life to his creation. By his resurrection he saved his church, gave joy to his flock, brought us back to his Father, and enriched us with the gifts of his Spirit. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. Only begotten Son, you were born of the Father before all ages, and by your creative will you separated light from darkness on this, the first day of the week. You fashioned all creation to honor Adam, the image of your majesty. We praise and we thank and celebrate, proclaiming, Blessed are you, for you appeared in the flesh, upon earth like us, and you lived among us. Blessed are you, for you were buried and counted among the dead, and you shined your light in the sadness of the tomb. Blessed are you, for you rose to life, giving good hope to all, and you filled the angels with radiance, and they appeared at your tomb like flashes of lightning. Now, Christ, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense, to make us worthy to rejoice in the glory of your radiant resurrection. Breathe life into our departed and make them worthy to stand at your right hand in your eternal light that you have prepared for those who love you. With them we praise and thank you for your graces and we glorify you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Yeah. 
and our prayers, and may we become a sweet fragrance through our good works and actions. Hear our petitions and grant rest to our departed in your dwelling place of joy. O Lord, our God, to you be glory now and forever. Kaddishat Alloho Kaddishat Hayato Alloho Kaddishat Loho Yoto Ephraim Kaddishat Alloho Shout with joy from the mountains, Sunday is a feast so great. Offer praise to the Lord God, and with angels celebrate. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, but whatever gains I had, these I have come to consider as a loss because of Christ. More than that, I even consider everything as a loss 
because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes from faith in Christ. The righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him and the power of resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it, since I have indeed been taken possession by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead, I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. Praise be to God always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. the Holy Land, praise, glory, and honor, the mercy of the Trinity, and the saints. Give you this song. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Apostle Matthew writes, then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and he gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and every illness. And the names of the 12 apostles are these. First, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphai and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean and Judas Iscariot who betrayed him. And Jesus sent out these 12 after instructing them in this manner, do not go into the among the Gentiles or enter a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, make this proclamation, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is the truth, peace be with you.
The kingdom of heaven is at hand. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So on Thursday, we began the fast of the apostles, the preparation for the feast of Saints Peter and Paul on the 29th and the 30th, the feast of the apostles altogether. So during these days of fasts, which is a purification of the mind, a purification of the spirit, strengthening of the will, it is a happy coincidence that this fifth Sunday of Pentecost lands within this fast. It doesn't always, of course, depends on when these Sundays of Pentecost arrive. But of course, the calling of the apostles calls to mind immediately this fast of the holy apostles. And this calling, it's a very simple gospel. We'll talk about some of the names and how the names are listed. And what our Lord does in this, this is the first apostolate, we call it. This is the first sending out of these 12 men to prepare and to preach and to heal. It's always important to remember that the very reality of what is the church is a healing and a liberating reality. It is the unfolding of the kingdom of God. It is God's plan of what he has intended from all of creation that is now established by his coming in his son into this world. This is the third luminous mystery as they've been promulgated, the proclamation of the kingdom. And as Catholics, of course, we tend to have more of an idea of the church and this proclamation, but perhaps not as much as we should. Protestantism in general sees the church as being an invisible reality. And so you just have Christians running around bumping into each other and just reading a book or a series of books. But we in our creed say we believe in the one holy apostolic church. We make an act of faith in this reality which is more than human. It is divine upon the earth. And we also know that it's seeing our Lord. He has all these people that come and follow him. At times, thousands of them. And yet, from among the people that will follow our Lord, he has a, a more select group who are learning from him. And these are the disciples that are numbered as 72, sent out two by twos. These are, the word disciple just means a learner. But from among the disciples, our Lord chooses 12. In fact, they are often referred to simply as the 12. How important it is for them to be 12. And we'll mention that also. We'll talk a little bit about why 12. But this apostle is quite interesting because you see what our Lord asked them to do when he sends them out. He says, do not go among the pagans. Do not go into the pagan towns. And do not go into the Samaritan towns. One group, the Gentiles, they're just heathens, they're pagans. The Samaritans, they're a mishmash of the old law and part of it in kind of a mutilated vision. So don't go to them either. You go just to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The first apostle, the first sending out, and of course, apostle is just the Greek word for missionary, the one who's sent. That's all it means. We would say shliche. Shliche is the Aramaic for apostle. Shliche is plural. Shlicho is an apostle. From the word shlach which means to send. So these are the men who are sent and are committed with a very specific function we see of liberating the possessed, of healing bodies, and of all of this aspect that they can see that this is freedom and healing that's being brought to them. And he says that wherever you go, you announce the kingdom of heaven is now at hand. This is the coming of the plan of God that he has had from all of, before the beginning of creation. And we in our generation have been called to be part of that. We often don't think about that mercy of God. There are a lot of people bumbling around in darkness and obscurity in their lives. We see it all the time. And God has asked us to be engrafted into this reality of the kingdom. And this is a magnificent gift. So when we look at these 12, and you'll see how they're listed. You have it in the bulletin, actually. It is interesting to see that when the apostles are listed, the 12, inevitably, 
There's always a little variation in the middle. But inevitably, Simon is always the first one listed, and Judas, the betrayer, is always the last one. And in fact, in this gospel today, you'll note St. Matthew, uniquely from the others recounting the list of the 12, St. Matthew mentions very explicitly, first, there's Simon. There's Simon who is called Kepha. Now this is a name that our Lord gave Simon. And it's reca- that, that giving of the name is recounted in the beginning of St. John, chapter one. But in the youth, the gospels as we have them, they're in Greek, so they don't write Kepha. Kepha will be in St. Paul's letters. So the Aramaic term for a rock, for a boulder, for a mass of stone, that name is not here, but an, an adaptation of a Greek name of Petra, which is stone, rock, and the rock then is made a masculine name of Petros. It's not a name that existed before. And so we're li- given the name Peter in the gospel, and then we go through the rest of the names. Bartholomew, whose name is actually Bar Ptolemy, son of Ptolemy, that's Bartholomew, who is identified by the fathers as also being the same person as Nathaniel. In other listings, you have listed as Nathaniel. Nathan El just means God has given, it's a gift. Nathan El. And so the name, but Nathanel, the gift that's been given by God, that God has given, is also Bahar Ptolemy, the son of Ptolemy. You know how when you, when you watch the news and they have something with the West Bank and they talk about Gaza or something, and inevitably these men often come up with two names, Abbas and somebody else's name, so you always have these different names. This is what you see with St. Bartholomew being the same as St. Nathaniel. And then, of course, the very unusual name of Teoma, Thomas. Because the name actually means twin, Teoma. And so you'll see it also referred to in the Greek as Didymus, which is also just the Greek word for a twin. And then Matthew, what's interesting in this list, of course, this is the Gospel of St. Matthew. And he lists his name, Matthew, was also called the publican, the public sinner, the tax collector, the collaborating with the occupying force, collecting taxes for the Rome. Yeah, that's me, Matthew. Because when you see the recounting in the other listings of the apostles, it's more discreet with Mark and Luke. They'll call him Levi, which was his Hebrew name. Oh, he has at least a second name again. And they'll call him Levi, and they won't talk about his calling and being, yeah, yeah, this kind of opprobrious collaborator with occupying forces. But Matthew's very clear. This is where I came from. This is what the kingdom has brought to me. I have been liberated from being this money-grubbing, collaborating political traitor. So I'm the publican. I'm the tax collector. And then at the end, you also have this name that's listed as Simon the Canaanite. Oftentimes it's translated. But Kana'ana is actually Zealot. So sometimes you'll see it listed as Simon the Zealot. And this is another one of those things that's put into the listing, which is fascinating. Because it looks like Simon actually, and they're listing it right there, Simon is one of those He's not collaborating. He's on the opposite end of the spectrum. Matthew was collecting money for the occupying forces. Simon? Simon used to belong to those groups of people that were doing political assassinations. The Romans called them sicarii because the sicarius was the, the big dagger that they would use, their preferred instrument for killing people for political assassinations. You know, you've watched these wars go on between Gaza Strip and Israel over these last months, and so it's, these things go on forever. And so apparently Simon, who here is translated as the Canaanian, but is, Kana, na, is actually referring to being the zealot. So he's come from a long way also with the preaching of the kingdom. He has been brought out of a vision in which things are just done in this world. Matthew assumes that I'll just collaborate and I'll collect money and make some money along the way. Ah, you can't change it, so you might as well just work with it. Simon, on the other hand, also with the manners and the ways of this world, we're going to get in there and get our hands dirty. Get rid of these occupying pagans in the Holy Land. 
Both of them are coming from opposite spectrums of the vision of the world, the kingdom of this world. So the kingdom of heaven is a dramatic upheaval and upending. We think it refers to a town, Ishkariot, Iscariot. And so these 12 who are sent out, what we want to be considering during this days of the fast of the apostles is that the church, the kingdom of heaven is a rupture and a continuity. It's a rupture because it is something dramatically different from the old Israel. Israel of the flesh, St. Paul will call it. And St. Paul will refer to the church as being the new Israel, the Israel of the spirit. And it is in that sense a continuity because it is a fulfillment of the promises of God in the prophecies but in a transformation from a law given to one people and shattering and breaking it open for all the nations of the earth, it is in complete rupture. So it is both a break and a continuity. It's the mystery of the church. That's why in the early 90s, this is one of these points, not these things for 2,000 years always hold active reality. You know in 1990, I think it was 94, the Vatican recognized the existence of the political state of Israel, which means that up until 1940, from 1948 till 1994, the Vatican did not recognize Israel for the very sound reason of the fact that there were people living there already that you sent off into exile and stole their homes and their land. And they have a natural right, the Palestinians have a natural right to their homeland. So the Vatican never, as a political entity, never recognized the political country of Israel until 94. And before they even resolved the questions of taxation and who owns what land where that belongs to the church oftentimes. So it's still kind of a mess. But the point of the story that I'm giving you is that when this took place, one of the major, one of the main rabbis in Tel Aviv, in Jerusalem, said this is a very great thing because this is the first time that the Catholic Church has recognized that Israel exists because they always claim to be Israel because the church, the kingdom of heaven is the fulfillment of the old law. It is the Israel of God, as St. Paul says. And so even up until the 1990s, these realities echo continually. You want to understand what's going in the Middle East? Read the Gospels. You want to understand what happens politically and historically throughout the world? Learn the Gospels and know the history of the church. There is a profound vision and transformation that's brought in here. And so that our Lord sends out these 12, and he says, we're told, he commands them not to go among the pagans because the first apostolate is to try to bring together all of those forlorn sheep who are not even following the law of Moses. Let this get them back on their feet. Because the original plan is that Israel was meant to receive the Messiah. And then in the fulfillment of that law which they had carried for 15 centuries, they were meant to be the heralds of the Messiah for the rest of the world. They were not supposed to turn on him, betray him, arrest him, spit on him, and put him to death. That was not the plan of God. That is why the first apostle it is, don't go among the pagans, don't go among the Samaritans. This is the first stage. Find the lost sheep, bandage them up, bring them healing, free them from the demonic, and set them on their feet and remind them the kingdom of heaven is now here. And because Matthew's always writing in this Jewish paradigm, he doesn't use the word God often. You'll find the word heaven replacing it. So the kingdom of heaven for St. Matthew is the way it's written. In the other gospels, Mark and Luke, they'll talk about the kingdom of God. But again, it's another one of these aspects of the gospels of difference between them. But what is magnificent is that he's setting up these fundamental blocks, and that's what we will lastly consider with is why 12? Why not six? Why not five? Why not 72 like the disciples? Why 12? The 12 is because in this continuity and this rupture, as there were 12, uh, there were 12 sons of Israel, 
that are the foundation of the 12 tribes of Israel, so you also have 12 new patriarchs for the fulfillment of the promises and the development of the new Israel. And so it has to be 12. So now you go back and read the Acts of the Apostles. And if you notice, Peter makes it very insistent before Pentecost takes place, we have to replace Judas. Because there's only 11 now. And there must be 12. And so they elect Matthias. And it has to be a man who has been here from the preaching of John the Baptist to this day, who is a witness of the resurrection. That was the stipulation. And only two names came up of men who had been there from the very beginning for these last three years. And Matthias is elected so that when the day of Pentecost takes place, this epiphany of the kingdom of heaven, this epiphany of the church, this manifestation of the plan of God, this reality is then grounded upon the 12 new patriarchs, hence 12. That's why we can call other people apostles but there will only ever be the 12. There will only be, there are a lot of Israelites, but there were the only original 12 patriarchs, fathers of the 12 tribes of Israel. So again, this is a very small text that we have, but it's profoundly rich. And as Catholics, of course, we know that that foundation is the continuation from generation to generation to generation of those who succeed these apostles. When our Lord sends them out, he says, I am with you until the end of this age, until the end of the world. Now, obviously, these men died. And it's because of our Lord's promise to be with them that we speak about the indefectibility of the church, that the church will be there on the last day, visible, recognizable, and hierarchical. It may be, as I've mentioned to you before, it may be a hundred people who have been finally rounded up by the Antichrist and exiled to some obscure island in the South Pacific. But among those hundred people, they will all be baptized, you will have the continuity of the priesthood, and there will be someone who is occupying the office as successor of Peter, even if they're all running around half naked in exile and starving on an island. The church will still be a recognizable, visible entity until the very last day that our Lord comes in his return. Everything else may be gone. St. Peter's was blown up a long time ago. Everything else has been ruined, turned into stables. But you will still have a visible reality on the face of the earth, organizationally, hierarchically, no matter what its poverty or what its condition, you will know this is the foundation of the 12. And in the book of the Apocalypse, it's even confirmed. If you go back and read chapter 21 in the book of Revelation, the heavenly Jerusalem that comes down, this vision of the fulfillment of all these promises of the glory of God being manifested, you have 12 foundations and you have 12 gates. And the 12 foundations of the heavenly Jerusalem are the 12 apostles. Their names are written on the foundation. And the 12 gates that go around the city of the heavenly Jerusalem have the names of the 12 tribes of the old Israel. So it's quite fascinating because you think, well, the older patriarch should be the foundation and the gate should be the apostles, but that's not the listing. Because the heavenly Jerusalem is not a fulfillment of the old Israel. It is a fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven. And therefore, the foundation of that reality are the 12 apostles. But the entrance historically thousands of years ago began with 12 patriarchs as the sons of Jacob, the sons of Israel. So we leave you with all of that to consider and hopefully to motivate you during these next days of the fast of the apostles. Because we have fast not only for a liturgical feast day, and this is what I give you as a consideration to apply your fast for. The church is a visible reality. It is divine, essentially. And it is also composed of human beings. Woe be to us. And the, home, the human beings are, from generation to generation, some are magnificently heroic. 
And on the other hand, generation to generation, some of them are just downright scoundrels. And that repetition, we're not living in one of the more strong periods of church history. And yet, the reality of the church, we're not Protestants. We don't go out and just recreate our version of Christianity. We are stuck with the reality that our Lord has made because this is his plan of the kingdom of heaven. So all we can do is pray for one another, support one another, be faithful to the tradition and to the catechesis that has been confided to us, and pray, pray desperately for the light for the shepherds to see clearly and to move forward apostolically. So use these days of the fast of the apostles to pray for the priests, to pray especially for the bishops, because they are the ones upon which this entire thing is grounded, for better and for worse, depending on the generation. So use these days zealously. I know it's hard to figure out how to do things vegan. You eat a lot of peanut butter and you eat a lot of lentils and rice. Yeah. But it will purify the spirit, it will strengthen the will, and it will make you more strong in your following of the gospel when you follow these ancient traditions. And at the same time, if you apply this fast for the illumination and the strengthening of the kingdom of heaven, you will see a transformation takes place within the church because this is to what we were called. And that's why our Lord then sends out them having power that is confided to them. And so let us all fulfill this proclamation that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten from our day, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made, for our sin and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he came in there. For our sake he was crucified in the arms of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. He will come and give glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the glory and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. He tell what madam hey, Aloho, Alwot Aloho, and Hanetayu. 
Accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you. Out of their love for you and for your holy name, shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and the imp your imperishable kingdom. We remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us. We recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the blessed mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the chosen one, our holy father, Saint Mary and Saint Jude. Remember, O oh God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. and Lord of security, make us worthy to embrace one another with a sincere kiss in the spirit of your unending love. 
that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. you to receive your blessings and assistance for we are weak and you are the support and refuge of all we raise glory to you to your only son and to your holy spirit now and forever Amen. O lord may the light of your face shine upon us deliver us from every evil and blot out all our transgressions that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your Spirit, let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to glorify and exalt you, O Maker of all creation. With the angels we glorify you and with voices of praise. We cry out and we proclaim. Oh, 
Anno alko so dum ziko men hamro men mahayo Barahu kodesh Yabil talmi da karo maro Samishtawa mehne kulhu Hono denita Dimahun dilan diati ki hadato Dahlo faikun wahlov sagiyem Ete shedu meti hem Hosoyam hame wa hoyed al alam alamin He then commanded and instructed them, saying, Each time you celebrate these holy mysteries, you remember my death and resurrection until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O Lord, remember your coming that saved us, and as we await your second coming, we offer you praise and ask you. On the day when you will judge the righteous and sinners, do not condemn us because of our sins, but have compassion and mercy upon us. Turn your holy face away from our sins and assist us. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you, Employs your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father. Have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you, and we ask you, For the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Annin monio, annin monio, annin monio, annite mororocho chayo kodisho, onachen alainu aru korbono ono. Dam mach no nutev, na bed lach mo no fagro dam shicho alo di lan. Olam zo cho dam koso no di mo di le dam shicho alo di lan. May these holy mysteries. May those who share in these holy mysteries be cleansed body and soul from every sin and receive eternal life. Amen. O Lord, accept our intercessions and prayers and grant security to your people and peace to your flock. Protect our shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Rashad Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, and Gregory John, our bishop, assist the priests, the deacons, and all those who serve your holy church, so that they may intercede and pray to you on our behalf. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, those who have asked us to pray for them, those who were desired but were unable to make an offering, and those who assist your holy church. Be a shelter and a refuge for them, for you are the savior of all. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
Remember, O Lord, the civil leaders in our country and throughout the world. Enlighten their consciences to bring security and peace to your people. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, mercy. Remember, O Lord, the Holy Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Marin, and all the apostles, and all the saints. Assist us through their prayers and make us worthy of their reward. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the righteous fathers and teachers who have gone to their rest among the saints. Remember those who diligently carried your gospel throughout the whole world and confirmed your holy church in the true faith. Assist us through their prayers and strengthen us in your love. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We remember, O Lord, our parents, brothers and sisters, teachers, and all the faithful departed here and everywhere who have gone to their rest. Forgive us and forgive them of all sins and offenses. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with our helpful knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory. O God the Father, you strengthen and encourage us, for we are weak. We implore you to purify us from every sin and to accept our offering, so that in one spirit we may call upon you praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord, lead us not into the trials of temptation that we do not have the strength to overcome, but deliver us from every evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. 
Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, bless your worshipers who bow before you and implore you. Make them worthy of your mercy and forgive all their sins. For you are almighty and rich in compassion. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your Spirit. Let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by our holy body, and all our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
We thank you, O oh Father, for this gift that you have given us, though we are unworthy. Do not shame us because of our sins, but help and save us, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Lord Jesus, stretch forth your right hand and bless your people. Protect them by your life-giving cross. Be their shelter and refuge, and perfect them with your abundant blessings, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your blessed Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So just to give best wishes and the graces upon all the fathers among us, may you who accepted to bring life into the world as a reflection of the Heavenly Father, may that celestial Father give his choicest graces upon you this day and all the days of your lives. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Thank you.